Hello, hello. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday, y'all. Can I just start off by asking, how are you? How are you feeling today? Just in case no one asked, how are you? I hope all is well. I pray all is well. I don't have any tea, but I have a little bit of coffee left over, right? Because today is transparency tea. It's all about transparency tea. And I have my little um, clear jar of water. Um, I was planning on just doing a recording, but the Holy Spirit made a way so that I can come on live briefly. Okay. Um, and y'all, this topic is, woo, it is needed. It is good. Um, why do relationships feel hard? Why do relationships feel hard? They can feel hard, but they don't have to be. That's, you know, that's something that uh, you can even like right now begin to be optimistic and just not just optimist, optimistic, but be hopeful um, in is that it doesn't it doesn't have to be. And truly, as you change, <laughs> the things around you have to change. Why do relationships feel hard? Um, so I was reminded, one thing I want to share with you really quick is this verse. And it comes from uh, Proverbs 17 and 1. And it says, better is a dry morsel. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with Strife. Better is a dry morsel and quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. In other words, better is a dry crust, come on, with peace and quiet than a house full of feasting with strife. Um, I was just looking at something, an article that says it another way. If a, a peaceful, poor family is better than a feasting, fighting family, then how should we live? And it's not suggesting that we should live poor, but sometimes we feel like we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, and we're giving, and we're giving, and we're giving. And y'all, I am all about boundaries. I'm telling you, I'm all about boundaries. Many times we're lacking boundaries. Or we're doing and doing and doing uh, in a way that we're overextended, overextended, or we end up taking on burdens that um, that aren't yours, right? And sometimes that comes from certain beliefs that we develop over time. I'm not going to get into the science, the, the complete science of it, but if you've been following me, I think you'll pick up, and you may already have some understanding of what I'm talking about, right? So we end up. Um, having these false burdens based off of, you know, negative beliefs that we have about ourselves or about other people that may have come from experiences in childhood or your young adult years or, or whatever the case is. But you, <laughs> I would just want everybody to recognize this. When your advocacy for yourself, right? because it's healthy to have boundaries, but when your advocacy turns into anger, something's off. When your advocacy turns into anger, right? You're addressing what it is that you need, you know, because now it's like, all right, I know I recognize my need for boundaries, but now it, when the advocacy is coming from a place of anger, Your emotion is all that is going to be seen and your message won't be heard. When your advocacy is coming from a place of anger, your boundaries that were supposed to be healthy has now been turned into a weapon. You've now weaponized your boundary. 
And that can end up creating more strife and division. Instead of helping the situation or helping the relationship. So many times we forget, or well, in the effort of trying to repair or create change in our relationships, the resentment that's been building up over time has now turned into this implosion of anger. So I'm not just merely communicating or addressing needs or concerns from a place of care. But I've allowed the chaos to corrupt me in some way. There's a corruption there. That I just need to take a step back. pause and reflect, okay? Because the um, the anger is exhausting. The anger is going to deplete you. The anger is, um, is tiresome. I even hear someone, you know, I feel like I hear someone say, I'm just tired. I'm tired of, of the way things are. But you will be, it's a recipe that um, will lead you to feeling drained if you don't allow the, the circumstance to, to actually develop you. If you operate or continue to operate in the dysfunction, you won't be developed. Let me say it this way. All right. So because sometimes, right, um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm pausing because I'm having so many downloads and I'm trying to see, okay, which direction should I actually go in? Hmm. All right. So you, maybe you're tired. You're tired of the circumstances, the way things are at home or the way things are in your relationship. But instead of us taking a step back and trying to see, hmm, how can I do things differently? our anger or our subjective perspective just wants to be agreed with. It's like the little kid in us just wants an ally. But we, we don't recognize that we actually need to be the change that we want to see. You're meant to be the leader And rise to the occasion. And when you can rise to the occasion and not reflect the dysfunction that you're faced with, then you can grow emotionally. But sometimes that, oh, I'm just tired, you know, I'm just tired of how my dad is acting. I'm tired of, of how my kids are acting, my siblings are acting. I'm, I'm tired of how my spouse is acting, I'm tired of how my mother is acting or, wh or whatever the case is. Um, if we don't take that step back and, and try to reflect on how we can do things differently, many times we end up doing this. We go look for an ally to side with the perspective that we have and the effort of trying to change. That if those allies are not, um, emotionally further <laughs> or haven't done the work themselves or maybe emotionally stunted, it's not actually going to push you to where you need to go, which is why it's so important to be mindful of who you even conversing with and the connections that you have, because it can lead you to, to be where you are in, the, in a certain comfort zone, even if that comfort zone doesn't benefit you. 
So sometimes we're looking for people to just tickle our ears a little bit and just tell us what we want to hear versus what we need to hear so that we can do what is necessary for change. So if I'm just looking for sidekicks to validate this feeling that actually God is trying to change because many of us are gifted. If you are alive, you have a gift, but it's not meant for you to just have a gift, but not have his love. It's not meant for us to have a gift, but not have, take on his nature. And your family is your first ministry. So if you can even begin to um, allow his development to happen in you, instead of mirroring the dysfunction, whoo, you're going to be dangerous in a good way. You're going to be dangerous in a good way. <laughs> the enemy is not going to like that. The enemy wants division. He wants you to feel misunderstood. He wants, you know, all of these lies, these flies all over or and around you to the point that you're just irritated and just you're constantly swatting and you're thinking that, okay, my fight is against flesh and blood, but it's not. It's not. He said, better is a dry morsel and quiet quietness therewith than a house full of sacrifices with strife. So how do you know there needs to be a change when your advocacy has just turned into straight up anger and irritation? There needs to be a change of recipe, not just allies that are just, you know, validating, validating, validating. If you're not being challenged to change the recipe, then things won't change. But if you're looking for a different outcome, if you want to experience your, you know, if you want your emotional, um, if you want emotional stability, if you want to experience Peace, don't just look for it, be it. And then everything around you is going to benefit from it. Come on, someone. If your mood is contingent upon the mood of somebody else, then you're allowing yourself to be manipulated. I'm going to end with this right here because this is all about transparency, tea, right? Transparency coffee. <laughs> um, I'm, a, I'm a work in progress. God has done a, you know, just a lot of work uh, in me, right? And through me. I can't just expect my outside circumstances to change with no inward change. So it, it really, be it begins on the inside, y'all. And then there's this, there's a ripple effect that comes from that. And um, my relationship with my mother, you know, is is one of those relationships that has needed changed, you know, and I've always asked the question, how can I honor um, when I, you know, I, in a place where I have felt, you know, uh, misunderstood or um, criticized or whatever the case is. And what has helped me is to look at her intention instead of, um, instead of how I interpret the message from a defensive point of view is to look at the intention. If you hear this, I'm telling you, if you hear this, if you hang in there and just, and really allow the Holy Spirit to speak through you, you will gain something from this. And if you not just hear it, but you do it, try, try me at this. It, things around you will begin to change. So look at the intention instead of your defensive interpretation. <laughs> I need somebody to even put that in the chat. I'm going to look at the objective intention instead of my subjective interpretation, because th those are two different things. It will take you in two different, down two different roads. One leads you to be, to be the peace instead of just trying to find it in somebody else. 
because many times we're trying to find it in someone that's not perfect to begin with. The only perfect person is Jesus. So he is your peace. And in him, we live and move and have our being. So I'm not going to make my peace of mind contingent upon somebody else's mood who's imperfect anyway. But I can choose to be peaceful. And then honor and have boundaries from a place of peace. Instead of advocating for myself from a place of anger. And now I've just made my boundary into a weapon. Or I've just weaponized myself. And anger is only going to be met with anger. And then there's going to be guilt because now I felt bad about how I came across or, you know, or emotionally, you will be emotionally stifled. And moving to Hawaii or to Dubai is not going to just fix that because however you show up in yourself is how you're going to show up in other places. But the change begins in here. He's looking to give somebody, he's looking to give us, he, God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit is looking to give us a pure heart, even today. So anyways, I pray that this um, helped you. I pray that this blessed you. Look for the intention as objectively as you can uh, with partnership with the Holy Spirit. And if this is something that you want me to talk about more, let me know in the chat, right? Because uh, you, again, relationships may feel hard, but they don't have to be. I love you and Jesus loves you more. Bye.